Does sitting there with a little pie chart calculating your exact protein percentage and your fat percentage and your all, does it really matter? Does it really help you? If you really build a plan based upon how much protein you should get, does it help you get better results? And is protein more satiating? Does protein keep you full? Does it prevent you from overeating? Well, there's some pretty concrete evidence, so let's break it down. Yeah, do make sure you hit the red subscribe button, also hit that bell icon. And then after this video, check out Sun Warrior. So when it comes down to getting more protein in, I'm a fan of getting it in in a good clean form. Okay, trying to go for lean cuts of meat whenever I can, but if I just need to get protein up, I use Warrior Blend, and that is a pea and hemp blend, and it tastes amazing. So there's a special link down below so you can save 15% off Sun Warrior's Warrior Blend. So use that link if you're using any protein powder, might as well save a couple bucks and use it below. And Sun Warrior supported this channel for three and a half years, so big thanks to them. All right, so let's dive into this. So there's a lot of mixed opinions out there. Does protein prevent you from overeating? Does it keep you full? Does it really, should it really be the foundation of your dietary pattern. Okay. Protein, yes, it's harder to break down. So it would make sense that it would keep you full for longer, but there's also a lot of studies that show that it makes no difference whatsoever. Now, where do we look here? Well, there's something called the protein leverage hypothesis. Okay. The protein leverage hypothesis states that we will remain hungry until our protein needs are met, no matter what. Okay, and the reason behind this hypothesis is that we have a storage form for carbohydrates. It's our muscle and liver glycogen. We have a storage form for fat. It's called our adipose tissue, our belly fat, our fat, right? But we don't have a storage form for protein. So what we take in is what we get, okay? And that clock resets. We don't get to store protein. So that means it is dire. We absolutely need that protein, whether it's meat, plant protein, whatever, right? We need that protein. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna remain hungry until that need is met. So hypothetically, you could consume 5,000 calories, but if you haven't met your protein requirements yet because you've just been eating a bunch of starches, you're gonna remain hungry, generally speaking, because you're not meeting your protein requirements. Now, if your appetite stays up in that case, then that's definitely gonna be a problem, right? Because you could easily overeat. Now, there's some science that backs it up a little bit more, okay? Now, when we look at like the signaling mechanisms, things called AMPK and mTOR, all this stuff, it makes sense. We have very simple, well, kind of complex, but simple in fundamentals, processes and signals that understand when we have growth from protein or when we have catabolism, breaking down muscle, breaking down protein, right? So it's very, very likely, and it makes perfect sense that that could dictate this whole response. So it's not a far-fetched hypothesis. So a lot of researchers have dove into more studies to try to figure out if it does make sense. Now there was one paper in particular that took a look at rats, okay, and it found that rats would overeat until their protein requirements were met, flat out. They would just eat and eat and eat, and then once they reach this mark where their protein requirements are met and they're at equal nitrogen balance, no more appetite, they would stop eating. Okay? Additionally, rats that were fed a low protein diet when given an option after that to choose between a high protein meal and a delicious low protein meal, they would opt for the high protein meal, naturally. Now these studies are a little bit harder to do in humans because, well, we kind of found out that it's not very nice to starve people and it's not very nice to kind of get that process going within people and they don't really like it a whole lot. So it's a little harder to do in humans, but there is some research still that we could find. Okay, there are studies that show that Humans, similar to rats, when put on a low protein diet for a period of time, will naturally gravitate towards higher protein foods after that diet, like they're trying to make up for something, which is kind of interesting. But let's look at a more real world scenario, because there was a cool study that was published in PLOS1, and this PLOS1 study took a look at 22 individuals, okay, and it was trying to understand this protein leverage hypothesis. So it did the best it could in a human scenario. They gave these human subjects fixed menus, same foods, Okay, same kinds of things, except one group had 10% protein, another group had 15% of their calories protein, and another group had 25% of their calories protein. Here's what's wild. Okay, the 15% protein group consumed less calories than the 10% group, meaning that as their protein went up, they consumed less calories. But what's interesting is between 15% and 25%, there was no change. So 10 to 15% was a change. 15 to 25%, it didn't change how much they ate. So what that implies and what that tells us is that there is a ceiling. There is a ceiling and once we reach those protein needs, 
protein isn't doing anything extra good as far as satiating. And also as far as anabolism, building muscle. We'll talk about that in a second. So extra protein doesn't necessarily build more muscle and extra protein doesn't necessarily keep you full longer. But that does not mean that you should not eat extra protein. By the way, coming back to the extra protein thing, again, I put a link down below if you want to check out Sun Warrior. This isn't just a video for Sun Warrior, but I might as well say that if I'm trying to get extra protein in, like after a workout or anything like that, I usually lean into it because it's clean and it tastes really darn good. Anyhow, there's a special link down below for Warrior Blend. If you want to save 15% off of it, check them out down below after this video. So now that we know that like 20, 25% of your calories coming in as protein, it's likely your ceiling or ceiling-ish somewhere in there. Well, what does that mean if you consume more protein? Well, we still have to remember that protein takes a lot to digest as far as calories. It is more metabolically active if you want to call it that. And what I mean by that is 20% of the calories that come from a single gram of protein are allocated just towards the metabolizing of that protein. So it's still like you get more out of protein. So should you limit your protein to that 20, 25%? No, I think as far as body composition goes, it absolutely makes sense to still increase the protein. I don't think you can go wrong by having more protein. It's not detrimental, but you're certainly not getting more benefit from a satiation standpoint and also from a muscle anabolism, trying to build muscle. Once your protein needs are met, your protein needs are met. You don't need more above and beyond that. Excess is really just going to get recycled into different components. So generally, there are a lot of studies that break this down, and when you look at the general consensus, it's usually between 0.7 and 0.9-ish grams of protein per pound of body weight to meet your actual needs. So I know there's a lot of stuff out there that says you should be consuming two grams per pound and this and that. It doesn't hurt, I'm not saying that's bad, okay? And the thing is, is there's so many different variables. That's the thing. My ceiling might be different from your ceiling. If I worked out aggressively yesterday, my ceiling might be higher today as I'm rebuilding than yours is today with a light cardio workout. So your needs are going to change. So yes, if you try to err on the side of caution by increasing your protein, you are definitely going to ensure that those protein needs are met. So it's a good insurance policy to have more protein, but it's not good to build your entire plan based upon that because you run into a lot of issues. The other thing that we have to remember as a really big picture of this is every calorie that you're taking in from protein is a calorie that you're not taking in from fat or a calorie that you're not taking in from a starch. Okay, And I would argue that protein is going to be less volatile than say a carb and a lot of fats. Given the opportunity, your body will still store fat easily. If you go overboard on fat, it's a lot easier to store that fat as fat than it is to say go overboard and store that protein as fat. So we can't lose sight of that. Even if you're doing a low carb diet and you're cramming the fats, okay? So remember that. And as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.